Hi, I'm Christy J with Stitch in Heaven and today we have a new project for you. This one is called French Farmhouse and we've made it with a new collection which is absolutely gorgeous. This is from Moda, it's French General and it's called La Vie Bohème which is so much fun to say. So today I'm going to teach you how to use this ruler. It's the 60, it's the Creative Grid 60 degree diamond ruler. It is so fast and easy to use and you can snap this quilt out in just a jiffy. So um, if you'll see we've done diamonds all the way across. Super easy to do. There are some tips and tricks that I'm going to review with you today. Okay, so I'm going to move our fabric out of the way so you can see, but isn't this just beautiful? I love the French General fabric because it kind of has, it's cotton, but it kind of has a linen look and you know us southerners really like our linen, um, especially in the summertime because it's cool, but it is just reminiscent of a French farmhouse and I just want to wrap up in it every time I see this quilt. It's absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so we do have, we have a pattern for it. And in the pattern, it outlines how to cut this very easily, just a lot of detail. But I'm gonna kind of go over a few things with you today. Okay. All right, so what I've done is I've cut strips, just like the pattern said. And what we're gonna do normally when you cut diamonds, you cut them twofold. So you cut through two layers. What we're gonna do on this quilt, and I'll tell you why, we're, um, we are going to lay them out straight. And the reason being is once we cut these diamonds, there's gonna be a bias edge, and then there's gonna be a straight of the grain edge, okay? So I'll kind of show you that in just a few minutes. I'm gonna stack a few just so we can, I can show you how to cut these babies. So you just want to layer these and lay them out flat. We'll do three or four. This fabric is just absolutely gorgeous. And again, it's called La Vie Bohème from French General and Moda Fabrics. Okay. I can usually do, if I got a good rotary blade, a new rotary blade, I can usually do several four or five layers, but we're just gonna do some just to kind of get started. Okay, so what we're gonna do here, I've laid them all straight. We're actually gonna do 60 degree diamonds, and we're gonna do them six and a half inches wide, okay? So here's the ruler, super easy. Nice thing about these rulers is they have the markings. Um, so if you're going to do six and a half, you're going to mark, you're just going to go to the six and a half, and that's going to be a six and a half inch um, diamond, which you're going to use with the six and a half inch strip. Okay. If you want to, you could take some washi tape or something and actually mark it if you're doing a bunch of these, and then you don't have to think about where you're going. Okay. All right. So I'm going to start off and actually, I love the Martelli rotating mat. Um, I'm gonna use it in just a few minutes. If you wanted to use it for this, it would be convenient because it just spins right around and you don't have to move anything. I think for this first cutting, I'm not gonna use it just to show you both. And then the second one, I'm gonna show you how to use this because it really is convenient. Okay, all right. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're actually going to start um, with taking off a little side of this and starting our diamond, okay? So what we're gonna do is just rotary cut. Cutting at a weird angle, so it just takes me just a second. 
Okay, so if you can see what we did is we started that angle. And then we are going to move our ruler over to where it says six and a half. So one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, four and a half, five and a half, six and a half. And it's clearly marked on here. I'm just gonna line that up and cut. Okay. And if you'll notice on here, there is a little tip that we're gonna cut off. So cut that one off. And what I would do if I was at home is I just wanted to kind of move this fabric to show you, but what I would do is keep going and then go back and cut off that tip because I am all about speed. What you want to do is when you move these away, you'll want to know that these edges here, can we see it okay? These edges here are straight of the grain, okay? These edges that we cut here are bias edges. And the reason we want to pay attention to that is because bias edges stretch quite a bit. So when we sew these together, we're gonna sew these in a specific way to decrease the stretch, okay? So, but if you look, the bias edge is stretchy. The straight of the grain is the stable part. Okay, so what we're gonna do here, I've got these little clips. These are stitching hem and clips. Super convenient to have. If you don't have them, you need them. Um, and I'm just going to pin the top of these so I know which one's the straight of the edge and just move them over. Okay, so I'm gonna keep cutting a couple more just to kind of show you. few just so we know what we're doing. I'm going to show you how I actually cut these side triangles right here, okay? Because it's a different, it's a little bit different technique, okay? So, the pattern told me to cut a four and a half inch strip. So, I'm going to put the four and a half inch strip here. Still going to use the diamond ruler, which I'm really a huge fan of. But what we're gonna do is there are stars and more markings on here. So we are gonna go, it says for side set in triangles, which is the SST. You're gonna find the six and a half marks on the ruler. And if you can see that, I've lined it up. And actually let's use this just to kind of show you how this works. I love my Martelli rotating mat. It's one of my favorite things. Okay. So we're going to kind of line it up. Cut here. Going to spin her around. Make sure everything's still good and lined up. Most things don't move because this has some grippers on it, which is great. And I missed the tip a little bit. And there you go. So you can rotate it without having to try to go around it or move the fabric. So that's how you do the set in triangles on the side. There are markings on the ruler. If you don't have this ruler, it is a fabulous one just to have in your sewing room because there are so many uses for it. I've used it a ton. It's one of my favorite rulers. Okay, so that's how we did it. So we lined it up with the six and a half inch mark and we just cut it and these should fit right in on the sides. Okay. All right. So I'm just gonna sit this over here. Um, I do recommend that if you want this controlled look that you actually lay these out or put them on a design board. So what we're gonna do is when we sew these together, we are gonna sew these in strips this way. So these are our strips and then we're gonna sew the strips together. So remember I made you mark the straight edge 
on here with your little clips and there's tons of clips you can use them you know you can mark every single one if that helps you which it does help me most days but um, I'm going to kind of show you how I'm going to do this so what we're going to do so I know that the clipped area is the straight of the grain and the sides are the bias. If you wonder about it, you can always pull them and see which side stretches. Don't pull it too hard, but you can see there's a little stretch in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew on the stretchy sides to start with. So this row here, all of these are on the bias. And then once we put the line together, these will be the straight of the grain and it helps it it helps prevent us from stretching too much okay all right so i'm going to lay these babies out takes me a second to orientate sometimes we're going to lay those babies out here and i know that this is my straight of the grain lay these out to where they go the pattern is super easy to follow and it has both cutting instructions that are super detailed and how to lay it out that's super detailed so definitely as you're doing this at home just follow the pattern it makes it super easy it goes together in a snap okay all right so um also Sometimes I'm a pinner because I don't want to take it to the from the design board or the floor to the machine and get my orientation mixed up. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of pin these together. I'm going to go from here to here. Stick a pin in it. Okay, and we'll do these one at a time. So if you'll notice when I layer these together. I cut off that little tip on the end. You're just gonna line that little tip up with the edge. See that right there? And it should get us a quarter inch. So I'll take it to the machine. Okay. We're gonna line it up with a quarter inch foot. Stitch it all the way down. Once you line these up and get used to it, you can chain stitch them, which makes it super quick. Um, so once I got my orientation and got going, that's exactly what I did when we sewed the sample. Okay. Okay. Um, you can either iron these open or iron them to one side. Press them. And just be careful. Remember those are bias edges and they stretch. So we're just going to gently open them up. I usually set the seam to start with, open it up, and then gently press it. And you can kind of see how it's coming, how it's coming together. Okay. Going to take the next one. Actually, I could take the next one and go this way. Would be fine. So if I was chain stitching, I would probably do every two. Um, if you need to know something or what, you know, how to put these together, I could actually just clip these together, which might actually be easier. There's all kinds of uses for these little clips. super easy project. Okay. Take it over and remember those are bias edges. So set that seam. Usually just kind of push it back a little bit. 
press it. All right. And I'm going to do the same thing here to put these together. Remember on this top one, there's that little edge that we cut off with our ruler. That just helps us line everything up. And let's do our little clippies. These little babies are very convenient. Let's do a side seam just so I show you how that's done. And typically, I put the lighter piece on the bottom, I mean on the top, but we're going to go with this. to again press it and then we'll be ready to put rows together. Okay. So once you've done your entire row, you can kind of see this is going to be our side. We're actually going to sew them on the diagonal. So this is a, actually this is a row, this is a row, this is a row, and so on and so forth, okay? So if you can kind of see, it's like that. Okay. And then we're gonna sew the rows together. So once you have this, you've got your bias edge encapsulated into the row, and then you're just gonna sew your rows together, one right after another, which is super, super easy. It goes together really quick. After that, you put your borders on and you quilt it and you are done. This is instant gratification. Just remember there is that bias factor and once you get that down, you are good to go. So again, this is called French Farmhouse. We do have the pattern and I believe we have some kits as well. The, um, a limited number of kits. The fabric is called La Vie Boheme from French General and Moda Fabrics. Thank you so much for joining us today at Stitch in Heaven. Be sure to like us on YouTube and Facebook. Thanks so much. Have a great day.